So, question four, the one that we as a class did by far the worst on. Two forces of magnitude 6 and 10, separated by an angle of 110 degrees, act on P, which rests on a horizontal surface. There it is. Find the magnitude of the resultant of the 6 and 10 Newton forces, and the angle between the resultant and the 10 Newton force. Well, actually, to do this, let's, let's strip this right down to all that the question is asking us about. At, the, at this point, the question doesn't care about the table. It doesn't care what angle these are at. The only thing that the question is interested in is the 6 Newton and the 10 Newton force. I feel I want to redraw them in a way that will help me. All I'm interested in are those two forces, so let me just draw those two forces. There's the 10 Newton force. There's an angle of 110 degrees, and there is the 6 Newton force, and there they are. This angle here is 110 degrees. By that reckoning, this angle here is 20 degrees. So if, I, if all I'm interested in is those two forces, let's strip away everything else that gets in the way in this question and think about those two forces. So in a horizontal direction, if I want to find the resultant of those two forces, it would be 10 minus 6 sine 20, because it's that component of it. So the horizontal component of these forces there is, well I, I worked that out, I've got this as being 7.948. I did it to four significant figures to try and keep as much exactness as I could. In a vertical direction, the vertical component, where well, the 10 Newton force has no vertical component, if I've set it as being a horizontal force, and, you know, I know I'm kind of twisting my line of what horizontal and vertical is, but I do have a 6 cos 20 as being the vertical bit of that force in this diagram, and that is 5.638 Newtons. So I've started by putting it into my two perpendicular directions. Now I want to find the resultant of this. So I'm going to do another little diagram just to help me out here. I've decided this is 7.948. This is 5.638. These are my horizontal and vertical components. And I'm looking for a resultant force from these two and the angle that it makes with the 10 Newton force. So that's what I'm after now. So using Pythagoras theorem, r is the square root of 7.948 squared plus 5.638 squared. So it gives me r is 9.74 Newtons. And to work out my angle, my angle alpha, tan alpha is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of alpha, the inverse tan of alpha, is the opposite, which would be 5.638 over the adjacent, 7.948, which gives me alpha as being 35.4 degrees, again to three significant figures. And that's how I would have done that. And the thing that I felt was crucial to that was getting rid of the unnecessary complication there, the unnecessary information, which was that this, this wasn't actually horizontal. But that didn't matter, because I just wanted things in relation to the 10 Newton force. In effect, I'm just kind of tilting my example but to make it horizontal. Okay. So that was it. I mean, that, that was the stumbling block, was doing that first six marks. The two forces act in the same vertical plane, okay? The particle appears weight 20 and rests in equilibrium on the surface. Given that the surface is smooth, find the magnitude of the force exerted on P by the surface. Okay, well actually, it's a little bit uh, mysterious in here, but, but within this, we've got, we've got a crucial statement being made. Because this is really important, there's something in here that it's easy to miss that is vital. 
and it's the fact that it rests in equilibrium means that there is no horizontal component of these two forces. The fact that it's in equilibrium in fact means that the resultant of these two forces has to be vertical. Otherwise it would be moving to one side. It would have a, a resultant force in either direction. So, so that kind of just slipped in there, little thing about resting in equilibrium, was a crucial statement. Because in part two, the first thing that we get from that is the equilibrium implies that R is vertical. Okay, that's a really big deal. So, if we think of, uh, of the forces that we've got, we've got a uh, normal contact force between the two forces in the plane, we've got the resultant of these two forces, and we've got the weight. They're the only forces acting, and all three of those forces are in the same vertical direction, because it's in equilibrium, it's not moving side to side. So we've got, if we resolve vertically, we've got the normal contact force, which I'm going to call N, plus the resultant of my 10 Newton and 6 Newton forces, which I know is of magnitude 9.74, minus the weight, and the weight we've just been told is 20 Newtons, is equal to zero, because it's in equilibrium. And if we rearrange that little equation, we get that n is 10.3 newtons to three significant figures. There we go. Now we're left with the final bit, which says, find the angle between the surface and the 10 newton force. Well, again, that same little slipped-in comment about equilibrium gives us our answer for this as well, doesn't it? Because we now know that the resultant force is vertical. We know that the 10 Newton force has an angle of 35.4 degrees between it and the resultant force. And the angle that the 10 Newton force makes with the horizontal, the 6 Newton force is over here somewhere, isn't it? Remember? The angle that that makes with the horizontal is the angle that we're after. That's the angle that we want. But if that's vertical, that means that is a right angle. So beta is 90 minus 35.4. So beta is 54.6 degrees. And that gives us that angle there. OK. It was a tough question, but it all rested, actually, on two things, on two important things to spot. The first one... Is can we get, a, get rid of unnecessary information in the first bit? If we're asked for a resultant of two forces, then just draw the two forces. Just strip everything else away and go back to those two forces. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is just how vital this throwaway little statement that says it rests in, equili in equilibrium. That's such an important moment. Because it doesn't just tell us it's not moving up or down, it tells us it's not moving side to side either. And that was crucial. Without that, we couldn't have done the right to it. There we go.